Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... The Grand Vizier clapped his fleshy hands and instantly the curtains parted. Two heavily veiled harem girls appeared through the drapes carrying trays of tea and various things to eat. Now, that really is service. Oh, we don't stand any laxity here, Mr. Seed. Uh, these are a couple of my wives, by the way. Number four and number 33. Oh, number 33 is a charming girl. Cost me a bag of salt and four goats and... Uh, Vizier, how many wives at the last count? Uh, 239, your mighty one. I see your eyes flash at the prospect, Steve, eh? But remember, that means 239 mothers-in-law also. A very sobering thought. Ah. Well, now, tea. Here are hot scones. Uh, w w what would you like with them? You haven't any honey, have you? Honey? Ugh, loathe the stuff. Vizier, honey for Mr. Steed. And make sure that you taste everything on the trays before we eat. I'm sorry to insist on this, Mr. Steed, but you see, there are so many people who want to kill me. Would you believe it? The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. So many housewives have discovered that the cleaning power of cold water Omo gives them sparkling clean results. Mrs. Joyce Whelan of East London has this to say. I've tried it. And it works beautifully. I tried it on my children's clothes, on the general wash, and I noticed straight away that things were cleaner. Mm -hmm. Since then, I, I will have used nothing else but cold water Omo. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. Keep your complexion soft and young looking with the creamy, moisturizing lather of Lux. Like Claudia Cardinale, choose Lux. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode 6 of this story, in which John Steed gets Emma Peel into the Bahrainian embassy, where she becomes very much involved in the intricacies of the fantasy game. John Steed had managed to obtain the necessary credentials to get him into the Bahrainian embassy. There, the atmosphere of strictly orthodox Arabian behavior had been shattered when Crown Prince Ali, a personable young man with an English accent, had insisted on playing cricket in the large reception hall. Steed was finding the visit extremely pleasant, and when tea was served, he noted that the security precautions covered death by poisoning. Right, Vizier, I shall have a little of that, uh, two of those cup of lemon tea and some gooseberry jam on one of the hot scones. Oh, uh, yes, Your Highness. Well, hurry up and taste the lot. Immediately, your great and powerful one. Uh, the great and powerful one is also the hungry one. Mm. Steed watched with interest as the Grand Vizier moved round the trays, sipping tea and crunching biscuits, sucking a spoonful of gooseberry jam. No discomfort? None, Your Majesty. Not even the slightest twinge? No, O oh, gracious one. The food is pure enough for the devourer of evil to consume. The devourer of evil has no wish to devour evil. That's the whole point of the exercise. The Grand Vizier tastes everything for me, Mr. Steed. So I observe. There's always some nut trying to pop me off. have to be extremely careful. Why, only last year we discovered that two of my cooks were members of the, the Pale Mauve May movement. Oh, indeed. What steps did you take? Oh, I liberated them for good. But come, Mr. Steed, what about you? Tea? Uh, thank you, yes. Uh, two lumps. But you haven't got your honey. Well, it really isn't important. I, I think I prefer the gooseberry jam. Please don't bother. This, this looks fine. Uh, you, you say you loathe honey, Your Highness. Oh, can't bear it. Never touch it. Far too sweet for my taste. My wives, though, they love it. All of them. Oh, is that so? Yes, yes. No idea how much they eat. 239 tummies to fill is a devil of a lot. I've had to order loads of honey while I'm here. Ah, and you order best British honey, of course. Of course. 
from B. Bumble and Company, of course? Of course. Yes, that's right. Forty jars of the stuff. A whole truckload. I see. Forty jars? One truckload? Oh, they weren't small jars like the gooseberry jam. They were special, prince-sized jars. More like the ones around the walls. The prince indicated with a wave of his hand an enormous Alibaba-type jar standing in the corner. Forty man-sized jars. May I see them? Impossible. They're all in there. Again, the prince gestured with an elegant wave of his hand, this time towards a draped doorway flanked by burly guards. Steed got to his feet. Well, surely your, your highness won't mind if I have a quick look. But as Steed moved forward, the two guards at the entrance jumped to attention and slammed their scimitars across the doorway, barring the entrance. You can't go in there, Steed. No man can, except me. That is my harem. <laughs> Shortly after this, Steed admitted defeat and went home. Mrs. Peel was waiting for him. He outlined his ideas to her. Well, it's clear enough, Mrs. Peel. It's the old Ali Barba and the Forty Thieves plot again. It's a typical Punsonby Hopkirk fantasy. He was always kinky about the Arabian Nights. This one's right up his street. Hmm, could be. I'm sure of it. Well, what are we doing now? Uh, well, I, um, I, I bought you a present. I'd like to try it on. Steed reached into his coat pocket and withdrew an Eastern Yashmak. He held it over the lower half of Mrs. Peel's face. Hmm, yes. Oh, it suits you. No, Steve. Brings out the color of your eyes. I said no. But Mrs. Peel, uh, only a woman has any hope of getting into the prince's harem. I absolutely and positively refuse. Now, look, that's where the killer is hiding. I'm sure of it. It's the QQF suggested fantasy plot. The assassin is concealed in one of those 40 jars. The rest are all honey, but one has a killer concealed in it. Now, look, I can't get in there, and you can. No, Steve. I'm not joining anyone's harem. The prince is quite good-looking, young, attractive, and rich. I don't care if he's Paul Newman. The answer's still no. <sighs> well, but if Prince Ali is murdered and you have to go through the rest of your life thinking, if only I had agreed to help... Now, see, that's not fair. That's blackmail, and I... <sighs> All right. Tell me the worst. Well, the prince has invited me to dinner tonight. And you are taking another guest along? Well, not a guest, exactly. Tell me, Mrs. Peel, what size do you take in puff trousers? Later that day, in the health center, Arkady, the Turk, had finished bathing and was dressing for dinner. His manservant was helping him into a large corset, lacing it around Arkady's middle. <laughs> oh, no. Last lace hole. <clears throat> Try now. No. Yes, sir. Uh, I, 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 I'm not to wish to hurt uh, you. Oh, when I say go, go, go. Oh, oh there. that is it. Oh, it's very good. Very good. Very slim. Very beautiful. Thank you, thank you. I think so, too. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the cummerbund. The pistol in the cummerbund, sir. Uh, no, no, I regret. I will be unable to smuggle it in. The search will be rigorous. Ah, that's it. Now, the coat? Ah, uh, yes, sir. <sighs> that is good. Ah, I must hurry now. It would not do to be late for the prince's dinner party. His first dinner party. He had his last. Vincent will see to that. Yes, it should be quite a night. Quite a night. The reception hall at the Bahrainian embassy had been prepared for a sumptuous feast. The prince, clad in resplendent ceremonial robes, was seated on a cushion at the head of the feast. John Steed, in black tie, was seated next to him. The Grand Vizier was kept busy introducing the guests. <laughs> I'm uh, extremely flattered to be asked your dinner party and be allowed such a place of honor, Your Highness. Oh, it's my pleasure, old boy. I haven't met anyone in this country who bowls leg breaks as well as you do. These things are important, you know. Don't you think so? Now, uh, has the Grand Vizier tasted all this food? Well, of course. No wonder he's putting on weight. Uh, allow me to offer you this delicacy. Mountain rat's tails in aspic. Ah, well, actually, I'm trying to give them up a habit forming. Your Highness, you may be allowed 
to present my compliments. Arkady, nice to see you again. Oh, it was most gracious of you to invite me, sir. I trust your highness is in excellent health. Indeed, indeed I am. Oh, Mr. Steed, may I present Mr. Arkady? Oh, Mr. Steed, I may like to know. Mr. Steed is a rival of yours, Arkady. He's from the British government. Oh, then congratulations. You beat us to it. Oh? The oil concessions. Uh, my country hopes to obtain them in exchange for our military protection. Oh, I understand. Um, Your Highness, as this feast seems to have satisfied the inner man, uh, might I be allowed to provide a, a little entertainment to follow it? Oh, by all means, Mr. Steed. Uh, be seated, Arkady. Continue, Mr. Steed. Thank you. Very well. Steed rose and made a gesture to one of the guards who struck the gong. Your Highness... With your permission, may I present to you and your guest, the Star of the East, Emma. The curtains parted, and Mrs. Peel, heavily veiled and dressed as a harem dancer, snaked into the room to the accompaniment of suitable music. The prince leaned forward with interest as Mrs. Peel began to dance, removing one veil after another. After four down and three to go, Steed muttered, Ooh, not bad. Not bad, Mrs. Pym. Not bad? She's splendid. I am pleased. Well pleased. The prince leaned forward and licked his lips as the dance ended. Six veils. I, I counted only six veils. There's still one more. Uh, well, she was poorly educated, unless she cannot count them. I would speak to this woman. Oh, certainly. Uh, Emma, over here, please. Yes, Master. I'll well, just stay We don't want to offend the assembly. Mrs. Peel stepped forward. The prince gestured to his side. Mrs. Peel sat down between him and Steve. A shy one, eh? Not much to say. Retarded. Definitely retarded. Mrs. Peel shot Steed a look over her yashback that made the death of a thousand knives appear a compliment. I offer twelve goats for this woman. It's a great deal to offer, but I have taken a fancy to her. I will buy her from you. Yeah, but, but, Your Highness, I, I couldn't possibly. I, I, I mean, indeed. it seems, Your Highness, that the British have no respect for your wishes. Now, if it were my government that were so I, 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 I was about to say that I, I couldn't possibly accept anything. No, no, goats, not even the smallest nanny. If you like her, she's yours. I, I give her to you. You can put her into your harem at any time. Steed is a five-letter word. And with a vicious uppercut, Jimmy Anderson finishes trimming his whole hedge in just three hours, 11 minutes. Great work, Jimmy. Do you play any other sport? Yes, dominoes. You're looking pretty cool, Jimmy. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user, like Mrs. Bodington. My wash is beautiful, and I'm very proud of it. There's nothing like cold water Omo. No dirt can stand up to Omo. Over a million housewives have proved it. It cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.